Hey guys and welcome to Short Walk to the Shea on Mad Hatter Magnet Fishing and Mudlarking and today we are in Cern Abbas with special guest Callum Sykes he's got all the good information for us so stay tuned so we're going to start our short walks here along the river's edge lovely little river with a lovely little walk very shallow but um Quite a lot of the streams around Dorset are quite shallow to be fair, but they make for lovely little mud larking adventures as well. There's a pretty classic uh, Dorset chalk stream. It's really clear water, which you don't get in a lot of places. So the chalk filters it, I think. This one's called the River Sun. Do you know why these um why these brick are the way they are along here, Callum? Um, I think they are concrete which has been put into sacks oh so it's just uh, like and then that's how they and then they've just boarded the side of the river up like that or built some or other built the side of the river up like that yeah exactly it makes sense it's it does flood oh it, it did flood a lot been very a lot of flood uh, control schemes up the river uh, so they every time we get a lot of rain they hold all the water back into loads of ponds um, to prevent the, it flooding, um, but before, in the 19th century, and, and even into the 20th century, this this village flooded relatively frequently. And you'll see why, because there's rivers running down every single street, basically, and it's it comes out the ground. I do believe, unless I'm mistaken. We're going to be coming up to a little waterfall in a minute. We are. Here we go, guys. It's going to be a little bit loud for you, but the stream comes round, goes down and under here, and then pops out just here with this lovely waterfall and this great pond that I've really wanted to magnet fish, but I'd need permission from the owner of this property. I'll take you around so you can get a better angle of it. Oh, I don't think we're gonna get the angle we wanted. But you get the idea, and then the stream comes down here, under this bridge, past, past Mill Cottage, and then carries on down along here, through along into the village. But we're going to be going this way, and into the village. We will um, be doing a little bit of a factoid segment for you guys at, at one point. So stay tuned for that as well. There'll be some uh, very interesting facts about the village, the uh, Cern Abbas Giant and the Abbey, all of which I think are actually quite interesting. So yeah, do stay tuned. As you can see, it's quite an old village around here, walking past old converted barns that have been turned into housing. But this house here, that's new because there was a fire. Which uh, house? This house. See? There, I mean, it's 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 in a traditional style, but uh, there was a house there before which burned down um, about ten years ago. Yeah, quite sad. I think it was a chip pan fire. Hey, look, guys! Hey, it's my ice cream. Ice cream. Oh, look at the menu. Oh, what have they got? Cream teas. Cream teas. The uh, Sun Abbas Giant's an interesting one because it wasn't recorded in written records until 1794. Um, and they've done some archaeological digs on it. They think it may well be um, older than that, but no one really mentioned it for a while. So its origins are a bit obscured in history. Um, there's some theories that it was a, if it was a god of fertility, if it were mm. if it were old. Um, if it were done in the English Civil War, then they think it may be a satirical drawing of Oliver Cromwell. Um, but the fact is, no one really knows. Which is kind of interesting. Bit of a mystery. So we've got the new inn over here. Yeah, there's three pubs in uh, Cern Abbas now. 
There used to be 18 though, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah. It's actually a variation of um, building design around here really. I guess it's all different ages where they've added buildings on throughout the years to expand the village. Yeah, there's, uh, we're actually just about to get to the oldest part of the village, um, near the church. Look at an interesting light, look. I like the spiral. Ad hoc house, what a name. <laughs> Church tower peeking through. We'll get to that shortly. Now this I thought was very interesting because uh, obviously it links in with the giant that's himself. And we've got the giant in. This is a free house pub. Very, very um, in keeping with the architecture of the, of the rest of the village. <laughs> brings us along to the Royal Oak and as it says below the sign there you can see built in 1540. <laughs> so you've seen the three pubs um, in the village and uh, the, it's, it's interesting that you can have three pubs in a village which actually isn't that big. I think there's only a thousand people who live here. I would have to check that. You can Google it. But uh, or Bing, or, or Ask Jeeves, or anything yeah, else. Other search providers are available. But uh, back, in, back in the day, there was 18 pubs here. And part of the reason for that was because the Abbey did its own brewing and was well known as a brewery. Um, but also, the water wasn't really safe to drink. So the beer that people were drinking was not, uh, was not like beer is now. It was very low ABV, the kind of beer that you can drink throughout the day and not fall over and go into a coma. Look at the um, the porch on that. Oh, yeah. Check that out. Some interesting architecture. It says the old house, but it looks younger than the house next to it. I would agree with you. Wow, look at this though. We've got the big old clock there with the Roman numerals. We've got the golden Roman numeral decals on the, um, well, that'd be a porcelain. What's that? A porcelain clock, or what do you reckon that'd be made of? Hmm. Um, clock face. I don't know. It looks looks metal to me. We've got a few gargoyles up there. Drainage has uh, been updated though. Very new, which is good to see. I believe this is a war memorial down the bottom here in the garden. Got the names of the locals that gave their life during the war. Glory of God and the grateful memory of those who made the great sacrifice in the Great War. This memorial was erected by parishioners and friends of Sir Navis, 1914 to 1918. We've also got a little memorial to the chapel guiding the Falkland Islands here as well. 8th of June 1918. 1982. Sergeant Ron Rotherham. Should be able to. Well, we can. Should we go and have a little yeah, look? Yeah, let's, have a, let's have a look inside. Oh, we've got three apples. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone fancy an apple? You know where to come. And a huge marrow. That's above it. That's the size of my hand. <laughs> oh, Carmen, Carmen found the way in. I've got the method. I believe this church 
upkeep runs on donations. So they, yes, they do have a donations box just here. If you wish to help um, donate to the upkeep. They've got a little um, bulletins board here with newsletters for the local parishioners and other businesses. My grandfather was saying it's quite rare to have these painted, um, these painted bits on the walls um, because, and I'm not too certain of the history here, but um, apparently um, during Oliver Cromwell's time in the English Civil War, they painted a lot of churches white. They whitewashed them because they believed that it was idolatry to have um, paintings and scripture and stuff just written on the walls. And I think some of them were defaced during that time here, but um, they kept the. Uh, Would you like to see some of the original? The scripture, yeah. Ah, oh, this. So this is the. I think what what my grandfather was talking about. But I think it's it was damaged at the time. And there's more to the right here. That's got damage as well. And you can see up there. Very, very cool to think that that's been there for hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of years now. Very cool. Should we leave the... Uh the church. Mm. Oh, could you get the door? Yeah, I can get the door. So the CERN Abbas Joint site is currently managed by the National Trust and um, they've put in place that you're no longer allowed to walk on the actual site itself and they've put a little fence around it, which is the fence you can see behind us here. And that's just to try and um, preserve the, the giant and the Iron Age earthwork just above it. I mean, look, yeah, just look at the uh, front of that. This is what I love about living in Dorset. There's a few other counties as well that have it, but especially around here, it's, it's a very pirate county, a very old worldy county, a very, we like to include our history in it. And, it's, um, I don't know, if you're into stuff like The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, you know, what's that uh, pirate film that people like? Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, stuff like that. Then I'd probably be into living in one of these villages. Oh, this is interesting as well. Yeah, so this is um, why, the, why, the, as well. why the village um, you certainly used to flood more often. This street st is still floods quite often uh, because um, it's dried up now. It's actually quite rare to have it dried up. But uh, this overflows from the duck pond up at the top of this street. Um, and yeah, before all the flood management stuff, you can kind of understand why a lot of these houses were frequently flooded. So this is normally up on the street. You see it, you see it often draining into that drain. It gets that high. Um, that's quite exceptionally low. Yeah, so I think we're coming up oh, to the Abbey. yeah the Abbey. This is the Abbey, yeah, Cern Abbey. Here we are. Mm. So here's the Abbey for you guys. Um, lovely area, as we said, right next to the duck pond. Got a weeping willow tree, one of my favourite kinds. And uh, let's go and have a little look. I've actually got the Commonwealth War Graves just here. We'll go and have a little cheeky peek. We'll also go and have a look at the well. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know any of this history. This is the path down to the well, St. Aug Augustine's well. Oh what? It's, it's dried up. 
How strange. There's water here, my friend. Yeah, I know, but uh, so just to explain what this normally is like, the this is full of water and it's completely glassy. There's no, it's like completely flat. There's water like bubbles up from beneath these rocks here, over here, and it flows tr down here and creates a little river. And that explains I, why the bit that you saw earlier that was strange that it was dried up is dried up and why the duck pond is dried yeah, up. Yeah, and no this river. feeds the river, that yeah. river that feeds the duck pond. The only bit that's left is the bit coming from the center. Yeah, that, even that, that I think that's, I think that may just be a puddle. But it, we, we, we have had a drought this summer and it is probably feeding through because it's October now and obviously July and August were extremely dry. And although I think it was flowing then, you're looking in reverse because the water takes a few weeks and a few months to flow through all the bedrock, which is the chalk. And uh, I guess this is we're just seeing the results of um, of the dry summer we've had. Well, people would come here to leave tributes and mementos and things. Um, obviously, they do ask that you leave biodegradable mementos or tributes if you do come here and leave anything. Um, just to help with the environmental cause. Mm. But yeah, you can. Hey guys, so we're a little bit puffed out, a little bit knackered and there's not too much to show you as this is what you can see of the giant from, from when you're up on the hill basically, not a lot. But that view makes it all worth it. Look at that. Zoom in on the village for you, get a nice shot. And there's St. Abbas village. See the church quite prominently. Yeah. See the church just here in the middle of the screen now. I believe that's um, the abbey there that you can see in the middle of the screen. That's right. All the way up and across. Let's see. Over and over there, there is where we're parked. And there's the workhouse. And next it. to it's the workhouse. Well, former workhouse. Oh yeah, we're not anymore. Now care home. Right guys, that's about all from me and Callum today on our little short walks with Shared Venture. And uh, I'll be putting some little facts up around the screen for you now about the walk, distance, travel, accessibility, stuff like that, parking, just in case you want to come do it yourself. But other than that, a big thank you from me. Thanks for me. And we'll see you on the next one. All the best. Bye-bye for now.